Let us realize this one thing, that there is one, one thing, one instance when death, instead of producing oblivion, produces life, produces eternal life. Now, isn't that wonderful? This death, which seems so severe and so horrible at times, there is one case of that very death which produces life and life eternal. And we have it said so, spoken so right in the scripture. I'll give you these two scriptural references. Revelation, the second chapter, the eleventh verse, and then the tenth verse. He that overcometh death. There is one case of death which gives life. He that overcometh death, it says, shall not be hurt of the second death. Once overcome, this outward attachment, which produces death, and you will actually die, once consciously die, what's the result? Eternal life. It says so in Revelation, shall not be hurt of the second death. It says so further in the tenth verse, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Such a paradox. But that is an absolute truth. If you overcome, as St. Paul did, the outward consciousness, rise above it, supersede it, you inherit eternal life, which is your birthright. And so St. Paul says that very thing in Corinthians 15th chapter, 1 Corinthians 15th chapter, 31st verse, I protest by the rejoicing that I have in Christ consciousness within me, by the bliss I feel, I realize that because I die daily. So he experiences death. What's the result? Eternal life. How? St. Paul died daily to outward consciousness. St. Paul died daily to this human consciousness. St. Paul died daily to the delusion which God has created. He lifted his consciousness. He superseded this outward consciousness by the presence of God within. I protest by the bliss I feel in Christ's consciousness. I die to outward consciousness daily. So there is one, one heartening condition of death. Death to this outward consciousness which produces all the trouble. Rise above that, supersede that, and you will have, as St. Paul had, all those who do it have life eternal. So death isn't so bad after all. And so, finally, in conclusion, it is the death of outward consciousness. And that's God's consciousness. It doesn't seem possible, does it? Attached to the body. It is the death of that consciousness which gives us life eternal. If we make the effort, follow the techniques which the Master has sent to you and given to you, it is not difficult, but you have to do it. Isn't God worth one hour a day in your life to have eternal life? We are so deluded we can't see that. But it is absolutely so. Even one hour a day of intense meditation will liberate you from this death, which is bound to come if you keep attached to outward consciousness. Self-realization techniques simply lift one from attachment to outward consciousness. That's all. There's nothing mysterious about self-realization. It is very simple, but you have to do it. You have to make the effort. You have to devote yourself to God through its techniques and through the channel which God has sent. If you do that, there'll be no death for you because death is found in outward consciousness and you're going to supersede that consciousness with the one consciousness of God. And so this is the case when death should be welcomed. You should welcome it, death to this outward consciousness of delusion which causes, causes us all the trouble. Rise above that, and you will feel one with the eternal presence of God within you. That is above death, beyond death. And I have one more reference, and then I'm through. Revelation, the 14th chapter, 13th verse. Most beautiful. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Blessed are those 
who die to outward consciousness and merge in Christ consciousness. That's what it means. Death is not a reality. It's real while we're in outward consciousness. But blessed are those who make the effort to get out of it into the one eternal consciousness of God. And lastly, in St. John, the fifth chapter, the 25th verse, the hour is coming and now is. Now is the time whenever you make up your mind to do it. The hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Now, the voice of the Son of God is the holy vibration of God. And those who hear it and merge in it have overcome death and they shall live. Because when you hear the voice of God and merge in it, you are not in outward consciousness. You're in his consciousness within you. You're in his great word, his holy vibration. So that's the most beautiful reference. Remember it. The hour is coming and now is when the dead those dead to outward consciousness shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. There is no death. There is no death when you realize what you are. And I close with the Master's beautiful words. Life is sweet and death is sweet when thy song flows through me. When that holy vibration flows through you, that's God, that's his word in us. What is life? What is death? They're all one in the presence of God. In order to profit from these practical teachings in a meaningful way, which will have a definite and tangible impact in your life, we suggest that you subscribe to the Self-Realization Fellowship's Home Study Course on the Science of Yoga. Please visit the SRF on the web at yogananda-srf.org or call the SRF's Mother Center in Los Angeles, California at 323-225-2471.